Hi guys, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my watercolour painting of lavender in a lavender fields in a very loose watercolour style. Here are the materials I'm using. I will be listing details about those in the description below. But if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask me and I'll get back to you. But I'm using a selection of brushes, watercolour paints and of course, nice watercolour textured paper. So please feel free to ask me any questions about those. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to mix up a pink wash. I'm using uh, Winsor & Newton's Opera Rose. Just going to mix um, a wash here and just deepen that up. Add a bit more water, add a bit of blue to that, ultramarine blue. Get that really, get a nice puddle of paint there, ready for my lavender fields. Next, I'm using some cerulean. Going to make some greens, add a bit of yellow, a bit of water. Just really get that a nice big puddle. Next, I'm going to add a bit more opera rose. Starting with the pink first, then a touch of cerulean. Don't do what I do, dipping your brush in. Always rinse your brush. Bad habits, die hard. I'm wetting my paper now, making sure I really get that water really sort of soaking into the paper so it gives me more time to do the wet and wet washes. Next, I'm going to apply the sort of lavender pinky sort of colour for the background. Really sort of load your brush. I'm using an inch brush here, inch sable. Really sort of putting it around the edges, wet on wet. Always keep loading your brush all the time so don't sort of drag the paint too far. Now I'm putting the sort of more of a bluey sort of violet colour in just as a contrast to the sort of pinky lavender sort of colour. Again, just sort of putting it in wet on wet easily not overdoing things sort of taking your time letting the paint do the talking as it were next i'm going to apply the sort of limey green lots of yellow and the cerulean wet and wet sort of putting it in the area where i've left a bit of white just tilted it there just to get the colors blending now the colors are fully blending i'm going to start putting some sort of still wet and wet but some leaf sort of markings they're going to blend in so you won't really see them but uh, you know just to create a bit of texture just making the paint a little bit thicker now using the same colors the cerulean and the yellow and just putting those in you'll see that they are sort of they're not blending in as much now because the paint's thicker i do work quite quickly you don't have to work as quick as this but it's just um just my sort of method um, but yeah, using the brush and just flicking the paint on like that to show the sort of grasses in the lavender field. Just rinsing my brush here now, wiping the excess off, adding a little bit of ultramarine now, a bit more pink, sort of quite thickish paint, not too much water. And I'm just putting in sort of, these are going to be like the lavender in the background. It's going to fade so it looks kind of like the lavender sort of blurry in the background so when i put my lavender wet on dry that will come forward and look a bit more 3d just be careful when you put it in the green it doesn't get too muddy so i'm just putting a few more in here just to create that impression of background lavender a little bit in the foreground giving my brush a little rinse here now I'm about to sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on my lavender, background lavender, to create a little bit of texture. The salt sort of absorbs the paint and creates a lighter area and it looks quite fun uh, when the painting is dry. It's something you can do in, in sort of creating texture in hedgerows and things like that and flower beds. I quite like doing. A different sort of salts creates different sort of effects so you can try out different ways of using the salt. You can see now what amazing effect the salt has done now it's dry. Just painting in some of the stems now for the lavender, mixing up um, a bit of cerulean with a bit of pink, the opera rose, and just painting the little buds of the lavender now. And I'm just gonna take my time and try and get the detail. And you can see immediately how that comes away from the background. So painting wet on dry, you get this sort of much more clearer defined edges whereas you can see in the background with the wet on wet it's very fuzzy and out of focus and that's one of the real differences when you paint with watercolour you've got those 
wet on wet techniques and the wet on dry, which makes it quite, you know, sort of um, great when you're trying to create depth. You can create that 3D depth by using these two different techniques, which is which is great. I love it. I'll try and use it all the time. I love painting wet and wet. So just continuing using the ultramarine and um, opera rose to create a little bit more darts now in the detail of the lavender. I'm just moving down the stem here, just putting in a little bit more detail. I'm just using the tip of my brush, sort of pressing hard and getting sort of different sort of pressures on the brush to create different sort of effects. And as the paint is drying, just adding a little bit more darks. As you can see, I've got a few more on the go now and I'm just adding little bits of dark. It's a tiny bit of damp into damp here, so it's not spreading too far. Paint's drying quite quickly today as well, so don't need to get the hair dryer out. But um, yeah, just building up slowly. As you can see, I haven't got any drawing here, so I'm just literally painting how I feel, you know, where I want to put another lavender bud. And I'm just putting in some stems now with the ultramarine and a bit of yellow with a very sort of small detailing brush. This brush actually that I'm using is a Winsor & Newton pointed sable, size three, and it's lovely. It really, really has a beautiful point. And I feel quite confident when I'm using it, so I definitely recommend that. Um, they're not too expensive. Once they get larger though, they become a lot more expensive. So just finishing off the finer bits of detail, softening those edges so that so they just disappear into the, the background. I'm just painting now some of those fuzzy um, lavender that I had earlier, wet in wet, just kind of giving them a tiny bit of detail as they come forward a little, just some of them. So I'm putting the paint on and then sort of diluting, diluting the paint a little bit just to push it back into the background. All these little sort of finessing and just trying to get it look looking sort of like a lavender field, you know, sort of close up. Putting a little bit of detail on the bottom of the stem, sort of pale, just paler, sort of almost greyish colours. Just feeling my way. And I'll put some more just above here. Just very, you know, see, very pale. So it kind of goes into the background. You can sort of see it. Just pushing it into the background, sort of giving that painting a little bit of depth as we go. I'm just continuing here now, just adding little bits of detail. It's sometimes it's just done by instinct rather than copying the picture. You just sort of feel it as you go, just sort of putting dots of darks, changing little bits of colour here and there. I just wanted to say actually, the um, little paint box I'm using there is the Winsor & Newton Field Box. And if you look on my um, YouTube channel, I've done a little review on it and it is, it's so lovely and it's great if you are sort of out painting outdoors or on holiday. So um, yeah, give the have a look at my review and see what you think. So I'm just mixing up a little bit more of this lavender colour, the pink and the blue, and uh, really fully loading my brush and giving it a good old spatter. It creates texture, sometimes stops me from painting as well and start getting too fiddly. But it's one of the things, it's sort of, um, sort of characteristics of my style of painting. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm just putting some grasses in, just a little bit of detail in the foreground with a bit of ultramarine and a touch of yellow, just with my size six sable brush and just sort of nice long free brush strokes, you know, just putting it through in the foreground, adding a bit of uh, yellow ochre here and just giving that a little bit of a contrasting colour and uh, you know, adding a bit of extra interest as we go. Just getting towards the end of the painting now, I'm just putting a few little dark leaves in there just as a bit of contrast and uh, bringing those sort of leaves and foliage a bit of forward in the painting. So mixing a bit of the ultramarine and the yellow ochre, just a few sort of marks, really sort of free up the wrist and flick the paint on. Gives that nice natural sort of look as you go. There, I think I've finished. I'm just taking off the masking tape and it gives a nice white sort of border. Always makes the paintings look nice. If you haven't actually put a mount on it, it finishes off quite nicely. 
So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. And if you want to see any future videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.